Pressure grows for Democrats to find an alternative to Joe Biden, and one Texas congressman is turning up the heat. I just want to find the strongest candidate uh, for us in November, and I don't think we have that now. But there's conflict within the caucus. Do I think that it was his best performance? Absolutely not. Do I think that the substance, substance was there? I absolutely do. We look closer at the case for and against change at the party convention and what could happen next. Two vastly different candidates running to represent you in the U.S. Senate. We go beyond the sound bites to learn more about them away from the noise of the campaign trail. Concern about growing demand on the Texas power grid fuels calls for more funding. But is the outlook accurate? The high top end numbers that are being tossed out need to be taken with a little bit of a grain of salt. The new call to action and how it could shape the future of the grid. Produced from the Capitol in Austin and airing statewide, this is the award-winning State of Texas. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Josh Hinkle. The story dominating news this week is the political future of Joe Biden. His poor performance in the presidential debate fueled calls to end his re-election campaign from people in his own party. And one Texan pushed the pressure to a higher level. On Tuesday, Texas Congressman Lloyd Doggett became the first Democrat in Congress to call for Biden to drop out of the race. The 77-year-old congressman urged the president to make way for a new generation of leaders. Doggett said his message to Biden is less about his age and more about his ability to win the election. The congressman spoke with our Monica Madden after his announcement and laid out what he thinks needs to happen now. Congressman Lloyd Doggett, thank you so much for joining us. You, of course, made a lot of news earlier by announcing that you would not, you really thought that President Joe Biden should withdraw himself from the race. I'm curious, first and foremost, did you talk to the White House about this before making that announcement? I left a message for them. Uh, they did not respond. Uh, I think my views are well known to them, and I notified our Democratic leadership also. Uh, you know, I did this. Uh, thoughtfully, but sadly. Uh, I wish this didn't have to be done, but I'm really very, very concerned that our country is about to be taken over by a criminal and his gang. The danger is great to our democracy, and I don't believe that uh, President Biden is our strongest candidate to put up to put a stop to this, and it's because of the risk of the harm that could be done to our country and our families that I felt it was essential to speak up. How long have you been stewing over this? Of course, we started to hear a lot more concerns about the president's ability to defeat Trump in November after the first yes. debate. Um, but has this been something that has been of concern to you for a longer period? It has been. And if I have any regret it is not having spoken up earlier about this, all of us were concerned and anything we might say would make it more difficult for the president. Uh, but Libby and I watched that debate together and we were alarmed. We thought the debate would give us the momentum to begin a comeback to try to overcome the bad poll numbers that have been out there. Instead, we were alarmed at, at what wasn't said as well as what was mumbled through the debate. Uh, and the next morning I went to the floor of the House in Washington and spoke to our leadership and to as many colleagues as I could to say, we have to have another choice. No doubt this will create a chaotic atmosphere for Democrats leading up to uh, the convention in Chicago, which I plan to attend. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think if it's a fair and open process and doesn't look like the smoke-filled rooms of the past uh, with uh, power brokers picking the candidate, and there's several, we've got a number of good potential candidates, governors, senators, uh, perhaps the vice president, who all can compete openly and fairly and then get about the business of uniting behind them to provide a, a reasonable alternative to President Trump. Who's your pick? I, I don't have one at this point. I can say for sure that I'm not acting on behalf of any other candidate. I just want to find the strongest candidate uh, for us in November, and I don't think we have that now, but we have to work respectfully to try to achieve that. It's going to be uphill, underdog kind of battle. But if we have a fair and open process, I think many of those people, some of them even called the double haters who didn't like their choices between Biden and Trump, we give them another alternative. Those numbers will be lower because a governor like Governor Whitmer, for example, is not that well known outside her state. As people would see her or one of the other governors or senators outline their approach, I think the numbers will get very close. Uh, I think we have to work together. 
uh, to try to use the weeks that we have left to have a good open process and then unite behind our candidate. And I think we can find the right candidate there. That's the way it worked a hundred years ago, uh, but now it can work uh, to resolve the problem that we have. Of course, you know, there have been a lot of conversations around age in this with both of the elected officials, um, you not being too far yes, behind them in right. age, of course. Is this about age? Well, it's a factor. You know, I'm, no, I'm not a youngster in this. In fact, one of the reasons that I'm able to speak out about this is that I'm not starting my career and concerned about what an impact this might have. I can be concerned solely about what I think is best for our country. Uh, it's a factor to consider. Uh, I don't believe there's a, 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 an age that is too much or too little. I'm more concerned about what I saw and what the American people have seen in recent months and the fact that many people uh, just don't have confidence in this president that we need to have in order to stop Trump. All right, Congressman Doggett, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time thank today. Thank you. Doggett said several Democrats in Congress reached out to him voicing similar concerns about the campaign, but others stepped up to support the president. Dallas Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett spoke during a news conference Wednesday and backed Biden's reelection bid. I think I've been pretty clear. Uh, I stand with the president. I don't think that he should stand down. Um, literally, we're here because we're handing out money. This administration has done so much, and he has a record to run on. So this idea that we will minimize the president's 90-minute performance and say that we need to turn our backs on him when we know that he has over 50 years of a record that he is running on, and when we talk about running on a record as president, he has done literally unprecedented things in a good way for this country. I know that people are still struggling. I know that there is more to do, and that's exactly why he's running for re-election, because it's about finishing the job. I just don't think that it's fair that we say that our president, who we know was born with a stutter, and we know that there is no surgery that can fix a stutter, you're given um, ways to kind of work around it, but as he's getting older, it is more difficult for him to work around those things. In addition to the fact that he wasn't sitting inside of a courtroom um, being prosecuted for 34 felonies, instead he was out on the road. And so as he began to speak, you could hear that he was hoarse. So we're talking about somebody who has been working not only behind the scenes, but he has been working in the streets. So do I think that it makes sense for people to bail on him? Absolutely not. Do I think that it was his best performance? Absolutely not. Do I think that the substance, substance was there? I absolutely do. Texas Republicans have a much different take. Some state leaders said Biden's poor debate performance proved criticism that many Republicans previously voiced about his abilities. Texas Republican Party Chairman Abraham George posted on social media after the debate, writing, Biden is not up to the task of being president. President Trump continued to be sharp and show the strength, leadership, and grit that Americans want. The contrast could not be any more clear. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick said he does not expect Biden to continue his campaign much longer. In an appearance on Newsmax, he told host Chris Salcedo that Biden would lose big time if he's on the ballot. Patrick said, quote, I still don't think he is going to be on the ballot, and I think the list to replace him is abysmal. With four months to go before Election Day, the campaign for U.S. Senate is ramping up. We sit down with the candidates away from the campaign trail, digging deeper into the contrasts with different visions for how to represent you in Washington. It would have been stupid for me not to have looked into this as a solution for the city of Austin. I mean, I've always been dedicated to public safety. Just ahead, an update to our investigation into hospital crashes and the safety barriers experts say could prevent disaster. I'm investigator Matt Grant with the latest on a local resolution now filed following a fatal crash at an Austin hospital that could be the catalyst for more change in Texas and beyond. That's coming up.